welcome to today's video. Today we're going to be taking a look at this Scion Organizer 2 model LZ. Now, let's have a look at it. So, it seems to have, unfortunately, got damaged by, and this may sound disgusting, been damaged by cat urine. So, it would be interesting to see how bad things are when we actually get inside of it. First off, I need to work out a way of getting the cover off here. So we've got this little ram pack inside, which I'm just going to pull out, which I think pulls out easily enough, he says. That one just comes out like so. And you can see the ram packs just plug into a little socket on the side there. So let's just put that there. Let's get a suitable screwdriver. And let's see if we can gently prise it out. So we'll just put it into the gap here. And there we go, that is out, thankfully. That has actually revealed a screw. So we're going to grab our screwdriver and we're going to put that there. Let's see if we can. There we go. That separates all of that. We've got another two screws here and we've got the inside of this to clean out as well. So. What I want to do is to completely separate the case because I'm hoping that we haven't actually damaged any of the circuit board underneath. There is a date mark on one of these chips though, uh, 10889, which gives you an idea of how old it is. It is uh, over 30 years old, in fact it is 31 years old. So that's the 1st of August 1989. What's uh, scary is I actually remember when these were new. The thing to remember, screws that go into these parts are actually longer. I'm not sure if you can see it, it's a bit disgusting, but there is the crystallised cat urine, which is just charming, really. Um, you might want to do this with some form of gloves. Thankfully, there's no battery in there, so that's one less thing to worry about, to be honest with you. And that actually separates okay, but you can see immediately here and here, there is a fair amount of uh, damage from my lovely cat. What sod that he is. Little tinker. So, what we're going to do is, I think, it would probably be a good idea to get this circuit board pack out of the way. So, looking at it, we have a screw here. And what does that do? Oh, that separates that one. So it looks like it looks like, um, that's on a ribbon connector there, so that separates that and that whole top section by the looks of it comes out. So that's got another expansion slot on it. So hopefully that'll do that. It doesn't actually look too badly damaged underneath there, which is good. And then we've got a number of other screws to release the rest of it. There's a bit of damage there to that clock circuit, but we'll see what's going to happen. I'm hoping the worst of it has been fairly contained. That is really in there. I don't think that one's going to shift that easily. Uh, let's get a bit of, see if we can get a bit of extra 
purchase on it. It's a little trick I do sometimes is there you go to use a screwdriver and then use a pair of pliers on the screwdriver to give you a little bit of extra leverage which in this case does seem to have worked because out it comes quite literally like so and then we've got a selection of the other screws here so we'll just pop those out they're another set that's that's another one that's really in there See the corrosion on those as well, and another set over here. This one here. And we've got these two clips here, which seem to hold it in as well. So it looks like we're actually on the side of the keyboard now, so we need to be a bit careful. And ideally, remove it. With the whole assembly facing up like this. So hopefully that will pop out. Need to be very gentle with removing this. And let's get the screw completely out of the way. So that's our three screws there. And we have this one here that needs to move out of the way. Oh, be careful that you do not clip the little board itself. Actually, it's possible that that is actually part of the screen. We may not need, actually need to remove those. So let's not touch those for the minute and see if it comes out because they may not be part of the case. They may actually be what's holding the um, LCD display onto this. So, and I was right. That was lucky. So, that's the board out of the way. So we'll put that to one side and give that a clean in a moment. And let's have a look at this membrane. So there is a bit of damage to the membrane. And what else do we have? We've got this at the bottom here which I'm really not sure what that actually is, to be honest with you. Unless that's some kind of sort of anti-static plate or something along those lines. Um, but it is stuck in place, so I'm not going to do anything with it. What I am going to do is take the case parts of the case that I can move and we're going to go and soak these in warm water, warm soapy water. Right, I will be back shortly. I'm also going to take this in the meantime and give this a bit of a coating with some white vinegar. So I will be back in a second. I've already shown you in past videos how to do this. But um, what I'll effectively be doing is just touching up some of these areas with white vinegar. Effectively just to try and attempt to um, clean them up a bit. This one, which is, you can't see it there, that's a little potentiometer. I'm going to work that free. And, if possible, try and take off this uh, plastic top. Plastic mode knurled knob and give it a dosing of switch cleaner so let's see if we can do anything with it immediately as it stands no we'll get some white vinegar onto that and see what we can do okay back shortly so i return from uh, downstairs and we have uh what's this one this one feels like the circuit board, so we'll put that to one side. 
The rest of these is parts of the case. And what I've done is I've washed the case in white vinegar and washing up liquid in warm water. And then I've put it into these towels to dry. Now you see I'll probably have a little small challenge on my hands where I've got to put all the little buttons back in. So to make my life easier, what I'll do is um, get a photograph of um, a comparable model and just follow the photograph, use a pair of tweezers just to put all of these little buttons back in. There's the membrane, which uh, as you saw earlier did have a bit of um, stainage on it, but that's now nice and clean. So I'll just put that back on top like so, and then put these ones there. Leave the screws somewhere safe, and those can sit over by the risk PC to dry out. So let's take a look at the circuit board and see if we've made any difference to that. So this was washed in white vinegar, not soaked in white vinegar, but um, some of the touch points, such as the volume, well, not volume control, sorry, this uh, little control here was um, uh, dab, sorry, I dabbed a bit of white vinegar on here, white vinegar on here as well, and also on this clock module. And on the other side, just cleaned this up a little bit as well. Um, what I also did, or what I can do, will do, is you can actually just scrape away a little bit of the rust. But to be honest with you, the main thing is to get rid of any of the um, any of the alkaline cat urine that may have been on there to stop it spreading and corroding any further. What I will also do at some point is actually replace this because I should now be able to undo the screw and separate it and actually get that out completely. So let's see if I can do this, otherwise I might have to try a slightly different way of doing it. Yeah, that is moving. is definitely moving and yeah so what I did as well is then just wash the board off with some 99% isopropyl alcohol uh, you can also use distilled water if you have any distilled water to hand that's just as good but the isopropyl alcohol evaporates quicker so I'm going to get this screw out of the way, screw and nut combination out of the way completely and I'll be able to have a look through my collection of nuts and screws to see if I can get myself a new one in there. I think that is moving, pretty certain it is. So it's probably going to take continued effort this way to do it. It's moving now, but it is spinning on itself slightly, which is a tad annoying. I don't want to do that too much, I'll end up chewing it out. Ah yes, that was something else I wanted to do, was to see if I could remove this little knob. So, let's see if we have something suitably small. This might do the job. So, I don't want to force it at all. And if it's not going to come, what we will do is we'll turn this up like so. Then we'll just get some switch cleaner in there and just work it like so. But that is now rotating, whereas before it was not rotating at all. 
So we are getting somewhere with that one. Now I've had this unit for a number of years and I'll be honest with you, I've never actually powered it on. So I don't actually know if this even works. So that's annoying. Right, let's see if we can clean that off. I need to do something with that in a little bit. Now, let's have a look at this. We have these battery terminals. Red is obviously going to be positive and black is negative. It takes a 9 volt cell, of which I have one here, conveniently. So, this is our negative, that's our positive. So let's introduce it to there. And let's grab our membrane. There's the membrane. So should actually be universal as to what way it goes on, like so. See, if we can get it to power on. So to do that, I need to look at the top cover, which I'm just unwrapping now. So here's our top cover on I would assume is this one here this yellow one which will mean that's this one here so let's see if we can No, that doesn't seem to work. Doubt it'll work this way because that's not the correct way for it to go. The other one I need to bear in mind is it actually making contact at all with these terminals? Yes, it is. But it's also quite possible that. This has actually never worked, to be honest with you. So nothing as yet. Let's try some more. Oh, I've just done clear. So I just press clear and I'm not sure if you can see that. We have something on the display, which is quite cool. So there's definitely life. Let's try clear again. It looks like we've got a slight loose connection on those ribbon cable bits that go onto the LCD. It also looks like I've got some of the isopropyl in there as well. I had this on that um, Casio calculator I repaired recently and what I did was I left it for a few days to dry out and oh here it is. If you look now, here's the Casio. Absolutely fine so Except this one was basically displaying this digit here, the very end, was not displaying all of its segments, but as you can see now, it's absolutely fine and working well. So what I think I need to do is probably just leave this one as it is. Although, 
Although, he says, um, I wonder if it needs a RAM pack in place. So let's put a RAM pack in there. So, said RAM pack engaged. Batteries also engaged. And clear. Definitely life. But it may need a bit more time to potentially dry out. So I'm going to leave that one for now. What I'll be doing at some point is I'll probably put all of this together. Um, if I can get it to work, I'll do a follow-up video. But if I can't get it to work, then no problems. There's no great loss. I've got another nice, interesting little um, device for my collection. Now, I've also noticed that there is a bit of corrosion on this little clock can. So, you know, that, that is potentially an issue. I've just Actually, I've just realised something. This is, I think, is it a brightness control? Um, doesn't say on here, but say on another part of another part of the case. So let's just put that one back in there for a minute to absorb any more moisture. Uh, this feels like the base. Yep, that's definitely the base. So let's pull that one out. So this is our base. Uh, there's no inkling or obvious clue as to what that dial actually does, but what we will do is just melt this back into place. So, so that comes over like so. This goes in there. That closes over like that. This comes in here, just flips onto the back there. And then, obviously, we can put the RAM pack in now as well. So I'll slide in a RAM pack 32 whole kilobytes of RAM, which I've got to admit was actually quite a lot for one of these little things back in 89. There we go, so that's in place. Let's try and turn that down there and just pop battery in. That sits in there like so. Is not doing anything. This feels like that should be on the other side. It's a little sort of notch on there. This feels like that should be over on the side that you're touching it with your finger on like so. So RAM chip is in place. Yeah, we had life, but uh, now it looks like, unfortunately, it's a little bit dead. Not to worry. Anyway, if you found this little strip down interesting, don't forget to hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching.